Hey, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. We're back uh, looking at the DigiPi down there, and we're, it means we're doing digital modes today. We're going to do some data modes. Something that always bothered me is why can't I uh, hook up something, a computer to my ham radio, my amateur radio, and talk to somebody keyboard to keyboard, whatever I type they see and, and whatever they type uh, I see. Uh, that's been elusive until recently, so I've got something here that we can share and uh, we're going to implement this on the DigiPi or your computer, however you like. Um, it's open source software. But before we get into that, uh, I got to thank the guys. Uh, these are the October Patreon contributors. This list has never been so big. This, this just blows me away. So we got Harold, SB Fox, James, Simon, Sam, Ken, Bufo, 333, Louis, Santiago, uh, Dom, Christian, Gabriel, Lee, Jim, Ian, Fallen Yoda. I think. I think that's that's the coolest name we've got, Fallen Yoda. And, of course, Garrett Brass. Thank you, guys. Contributors to patreon.com slash km6lyw for October. And October is not even done. We're October 19th at the time of this recording. And, of course, I'm running out of room on the big screen here. So thank you, guys. Uh, being a patron gets you access, uh, early access to km6lyw software. Um, you're seeing the DigiPi image right down there. It's running. This will get you access to that and all the info. Go to craigerorg slash DigiPi if you want to build your own. DigiPi. So let's talk. Let's get back to talking about keyboard to keyboard communication. Um, a lot of people are probably thinking, yeah, this is going to be PSK 31. You know, you can fire up FL Digi, do PSK 31, and you know, basically what I type, you see, and vice versa. And and that's cool, and it works great for HF modes. Um, I don't really think it works on VHF very well. That'd be something we could try. Um, but there's no error correction in that. You know, if there's a fade or a pack crackle or a pop, um, you know, the, the transmission is kind of destroyed. Let's, so let's let's make this a reliable, let's qualify this, a reliable way to do keyboard to keyboard over ham radio. So the thing that came up uh, that I found, you guys are probably, some of you are already familiar with this. In fact, uh, some of you described it to me already. It was called Linpack, L-I-N-P-A-C. And this is like the Linux chat client for AX.25 networking. Do you guys know what AX.25 networking is? Well, we can do that on the DigiPi. The DigiPi is configured for that. It's like a network interface, only it uses your radio. And what's cool about AX.25 is it has that error correction and it has an ACK NAC kind of process. So all packets will eventually get through and reordered. So it's a transport layer protocol, AX.25, and you can implement that on amateur radio and then run applications on top of that. And then one of those applications is Linpack. And it's just as simple as I said, is I can connect to you and uh, we can have a chat or you can connect to me. You know, it's listening for those connections. So AX.25 is called a connected transport protocol. It means the connection's established and it does all the hard work of making sure there's error correction and packets are retransmitted if needed. And then the application just sees a, a clean data stream with no errors and everything's in the, in the right order. Um, so over on the DigiPi, I've got Direwolf running, and it's in 300 baud mode. Um, I don't know if we can uh, pull that up here. So you can just see how it's running. This isn't really a DigiPi video. This is kind of to help you, you know, on any computer. Hopefully a Linux computer. But here we got Direwolf running uh, with these options. And if you go into direwolf.conf, you can get it into 300 baud mode. Not everyone knows about this. There's a modem line called uh, in the comp file for Direwolf, and it's modem space 300, and then you want to put 1600 colon 1800 because that's where the space and mark tones will be in uh, hertz. So uh, once you put Direwolf in the 300 baud mode, which we've got here running on the DigiPi, um, then you get AX.25 running. That's probably a whole other separate video, but if you've got a uh, AX.25 network interface like we have here, AX0. You notice the uh, the, <laughs> the uh, route is KM6LYW-10. It's not an IP address. It's an actual call sign. Um, so AX.25 is running, and then there is you can hook up KISS. You need to use KISS attach uh, to temp KISS TNC, and that way the KISS interface will work uh, for your device. Um, and that'll that'll basically create a KISS interface for Direwolf, which is already running. I, I know that's complicated. Um, and then for some reason, we have to enable CRC uh, on the KISS interface. And then at this point, if you followed me this far, and I understand if you haven't, there's a lot of other cool stuff you can learn. But once you've got AX.25 up, um, once you've figured that out, then we can, we can run Linpack on top of that. So at that point, we just want to run sudo Linpack. In fact, I've already got it running over here. This is the DigiPi control interface. And this is Linpack. 
I just fired it up here. So the top screen is um, stuff that's directed to you. I know I know that the framing's kind of weird here. The top string screen is stuff that's directed to you, and then the middle screen is where we're typing. You know, I can type stuff here, and then the bottom screen, so to speak, the bottom black part. It's just the, the stream that's coming over the radio. And as far as the radio is concerned, there is a cool packet network on 14.105. And I've got the DigiPi plugged into this Yaesu 991. And I want you to tune to 14.105. And this is the 105 network. And it's on, uh, what's the hard part to, <laughs> to remember here is this is in digital mode and it's on lower sideband. Yeah, I know it's on 20 meters, but use lower sideband for this packet network. And uh, basically, if you run Linpack, the Raspberry Pi, and you're tuned to this frequency on lower sideband, you'll start seeing other radios. In fact, uh, you can see the DigiPi has a few call signs that it's uh, spotted already on this frequency. Actually, one of them's in Canada. So I'm in California. So that's kind of neat. So there's a VE station out there. Uh, Conditions are just deplorable today. In fact, I'm not even sure we'll be able to make a connection, but uh, we can kind of demonstrate it. Um, earlier, um, I was just trying to connect to a bulletin board system called the uh, Alpha Charlie Zero Victor Charlie Dash One. Total bulletin board system, you know, with messaging and stuff. Kind of like the old 80s day, uh, 80s, where you could use a computer and a modem and connect to FidoNet or even AOL. But anyways, that's all here on this frequency. And while I was talking to this, interacting with this um, bulletin board, you know, someone comes on and says, you know, hey, Craig, you know, I see that pop up in a new window. And I, you can press F1 to go to one channel, F2, F3. That's what I'm pressing on the keyboard. And then uh, under the F2 key, under the F2 screen, um, dude just says, hey, Craig, uh, <laughs> saw you were keying there. You know, someone just uh, cold called me, connected keyboard to keyboard with no middleman. And uh, that was a Steve. And I, I hopefully I can get your call sign right, Steve. So that was a Kilo Bravo 9 uh, Papa Victor Hotel. And so he, if I remember right, is in Wisconsin. So Steve, while I was messing with this, trying to learn this, Steve just says, hey, what's up? So the community is out there on 14.105. Now to connect to something using this, we would say colon C, or we can spell it out if we want, and uh, AC0VC dash one. And I'm going to try and connect. Uh, I'm going to watch the... Uh, the Raspberry Pi is going to, the DigiPi is going to try and connect. There's a transmit light up here that'll turn red. Yeah, there's some glare on the radio. So I'm just going to try and connect. I'm at 33 watts, and I think he's in Colorado, and I'm in California. And he wasn't connecting uh, earlier this morning. Again, conditions are just awful. I wish uh, this could be a better demonstration, but uh, I really wanted to get this video out. So I don't know if you can hear it. It's making uh, chirping noises, direwolf is. It's not the traditional 1200 baud modem static. It's more of a, uh, a whistling noise. Uh, but you can see there's other traffic here. I could probably cold call one of these guys. It's, it's hard to say if there is a uh, an operator there. But these are all people are hanging out on Net 105. So I mentioned that there's a different connection under each uh, function key. So this is F1, right? So it changes screens. F2 is where I'm trying to connect to the bulletin board, AC0VC-1. But then F10 is a special function key. Uh, this is kind of like where you would call CQ. This isn't a connected screen. Um, so if I also wanted to say, you know, CQ, 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 KM6LIW here, CQ, I can hit that, and it's transmitting. I don't know if you can hear it. <laughs> And this is where we would call CQ on uh, under the F10, the F10 function key on our keyboard. And of course, I don't think anyone's going to be responding, but we can see other people just kind of flooding the channel. This is where you would uh, broadcast, so to speak. Uh, see, <laughs> CQ is one of the one of the times you're actually allowed to broadcast an amateur radio, at least in the in this jurisdiction. Um, so I'm not seeing anyone there calling CQ, and no one's responding to my CQ. That'd be cool if we could get a chat going, but it is slow, and it is 300 baud. Um, actually, someone just responded to my chat. It's a Kilo Bravo 9 PVH. That's Steve. <laughs> my radio is going nuts. So I'm going to press F1, and you'll see that KB9 PVH is now connected. This is kind of cool. I didn't expect this to work. And uh, this is this is Linpack responding to him. So stuff in red is stuff going out to his radio. It's telling him, welcome to my space welcome kb9 pvh and uh, it's telling us some quick commands that he can use to interact with my instance of linpack 
Um, so it's going back and forth. I don't hear him very loud. Let me see. I know he's trying to get through, and I know conditions are just horrible, so I kind of feel bad even calling CQ, and this isn't going to work. Now, in the bottom, you can see the actual network AX.25 protocol happening. It's sending the acknowledgments. It's sending Roger, Roger, basically. Um, yeah, he's trying to reconnect right now. And we'll see what he says. <laughs> I'm sorry, Steve. The propagation's horrible today. I know you're trying to connect. But that would be cool. And I'm going to put you on YouTube, buddy. Um, and I just can't get your permission. It keeps retransmitting a lot of uh, packets. You can see one of my packets was rejected to, from him. So then I'm retransmitting it. And I really don't want to put the power up above 33 watts. So uh, actually, I'm going to disconnect from that bulletin board. And see how it's blinking over there on number one? That's him actually saying stuff. I'm going to disconnect from AC0VC just to keep it less complicated. I'm going to press F1 again. And he's saying, howdy, Rich. I'm going to say, hey, my first name is Richard on QRZ. Name is Craig. And I'm just going to send that. Actually, I'm going to look him up on QRZ. I think that's Steve. Let's look, let's look up KB, KB9PVH. KB9PVH. Oops, I want to do this on QRZ. Let's look him up. KB9PVH. Yeah, that's Steve. Yeah, he remembers. He says, ah, Craig. <laughs> so he probably forgot my call sign. Is my call sign hard to remember? KM6LYW. All right, that's Steve. I'm going to say, yeah. We chatted a day or so ago. I'm making a YouTube video. You're live. So I just sent those three lines. Well, that's him. He's coming in at an S7. No, that's some other guy spamming the channel. He says, great to see you on. You can see how slow this is. Oh, this one guy keeps spamming the channel. Propaganda. I see. Great to see you on the wire here. That's what Steve says. Well, I'm stoked. We got a connection, you guys. Um, I honestly didn't think we would finish this video <laughs> doing this. Um, so while he's transmitting stuff, um, I'm kind of waiting for him to complete. Actually, I'm retransmitting some of those, my older packets. And what's cool about AX.25 is it, it takes care of the resending and it'll reorder things, you know, so nothing can get out of order. Um, what I might do is pause you guys just for a second so he can uh, complete his transmission to me if he hasn't already. And, uh, and then so I'm going to pause and we're going to come right back. <laughs> All right. So I don't know. It's hard to tell when someone's done talking. So uh, Steve says, saw your CQ beacon and figured I would try a link. So a link is obviously connecting to my uh, Lin BPQ. Um, so how cool is that? We actually made a contact. I, I didn't expect to do this. I'm going to say... Okay, Steve, gonna wrap. Oh, he says, yes, I remembered. That's probably about the fact that we were chatting yesterday. Okay, I can say, okay, Steve, gonna wrap it up. We'll talk later. 73, 73, 73. Thanks. And then I'll say 73, 70, 73. SK, SK, you know, silent key. I don't, I don't know the, I don't know how we're supposed to type stuff here. So I'm just, I'm just gonna send that. That way we can make this video a little shorter. I mean, I could talk with Steve for another hour. You guys have an hour? I don't know. That's it's totally fun to me. To me, this is totally cool. Keyboard to keyboard, I'm talking to Steve in Wisconsin, and I'm in California. I'm at 33 watts. We're using the Yesu 991 and then with the digipi that has an ax.25 interface on it i'm going to let steve keep going here hopefully my packet got through for the 73 so that's it guys so this is lin pack lin pack and this is for linux so if you have any kind of raspberry pi you should be able to to install it um when I tried to use app to get to install Linpack, um, it was like seg faulting and giving me problems. So what you want to do is really compile from source. I know that's scary, um, 
but you can get the source code from here, get download it. Um, it's just you run configure, make, make install, and then you get the latest version, which is version 0.28, which is what we have here, and that seems to work okay. Uh, for those of you who have the KM6LYW DigiPy, um, it will have this in the future release, but you can get it to work there now. This is the prototype that I'm working on. Um, in fact, you can take a look at it here. If we go into AX call, um, you'll notice there is a thing that says run linpack. Um, this is where we do all of our AX.25 connection stuff. So there's a run linpack button there. Um, <laughs> Steve, I'm sorry, Steve, man, I got to let you go. It says, uh, I typed the howdy rich line. He remembered after he typed rich, which is my actual first name. Haha. <laughs> okay, good luck with the vid, A. Eh? He's from Wisconsin. Good luck with the vid, A. Eh? Thanks, Steve. A path moving around a bit on us too, I see. Uh, not sure what that means. <laughs> Sorry, Steve. I'm going to let you go, buddy. Um, so I was just going to demonstrate and hit Alt-X to exit out of this. And then uh, you can actually run LinPack from the DigiPy itself, so you don't need to know command line stuff. Uh, remember, with the DigiPy, everything runs in a web browser, okay? Hey, there it is. We can see what was going on here. It actually picked up where it left off. So this is Linpack running in the web browser on the DigiPy. So you don't need a command line client or terminal or anything like that. Um, this is in a, in a web browser. And uh, I'm just going to go over here to the F10 and say, uh, I'm just going to say I'm silent key, silent key. And I'm going to broadcast that, so to speak. And so I just basically I'm signing out of the, the stream. So this is under the F10 key. And then back to the F1 key, um, we have a disconnected uh, Steve who might still be stunning, sending us stuff. I hope not. Okay, so that's it from KM6LYW Radio today. I just wanted to demonstrate how we can do keyboard to keyboard stuff. We did it over HF uh, between California and Wisconsin. Of course, on 1200 baud on, on, if you have a VHF rig, you know, a mobile rig and you got the DigiPi hooked up to that, you can use VHF. It's probably 10 times faster. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't really made a conversation, but I've heard a lot of traffic come through quickly. Um, so LinPack for Linux for keyboard to commu keyboard communication using your AX.25 network protocol with your amateur radio and RF as a physical layer. Now that is a long sentence. That's cool. This is KM6LYW Radio, and I'm clear. <laughs>